Okay, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to the pre-health advising specialized advising session. Um, we are excited to welcome you to Emory University. Um, and we're going to start off by just doing some introductions, and then I'll share my screen um, that we have some slides to go over. So um, my name is Greg Hollinger. I serve as the Associate Director for Pre-Health Advising. I am also the advisors for last names D through K, um, and so I'm excited to welcome you all. I've been at Emory now for eight years, and uh, Atlanta and Emory has really just become home for me, and so I'm excited to welcome you. Okay, hi, I'm Kim Molay. I'm the um, Director of Pre-Health Advising, have been working with um, Emory for quite a while. It's my 20th year here at Emory. Um, worked in different divisions over the years, but have been here in Pre-Health Advising for the last seven years. So we're very excited to have you here today. Hi everyone, my name is Nadia Bahit. I am one of the assistant directors for pre-health advising here at Emory. We're excited to have you guys come and join us this year. Um, I work with students whose last names are S through Z, and I also assist Kim in our work with diversity, equity, inclusion, and justice, as well as helping to verify students who wanna shadow um, Emory physicians. And welcome to Emory, everybody. My name is Anthony Steele, and um, outside of advising last names L through R. Uh, I'm your native Atlantean. So if you're new to Atlanta, if you have questions about how to get around, cool places to go, um, I can help you out with that as well. But pleasure to have you all and uh, welcome and look forward to seeing you all in the fall. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Aguilera and I'm the program coordinator for PHA. Um, I am also an alum of Oxford, Emory, and also Rollins School of Public Health. And I manage a lot of the communications for the office. Okay, thank you so much everyone for introductions. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen now and we will go ahead and get started with our session. Um, <clears throat> so here on this page, if you can, if you're able, um, please go ahead and scan that QR code. It just helps us track attendance for today. Um, it's important because we want to know who's here, um, what you're interested in, and um, so we can best connect you to the resources on campus. Um, this QR code will also be available at the end of the presentation. So if you're not able to get it right now, that is A-OK, -okay, um, and it will be available at the end as well as in the recording um, once that is live. So our agenda for today, I would say this session is our first interaction with many of our first year students. Um, so my goal and our goal is to really orient you to pre-health advising, let you know who we are, what resources, the timing and how to utilize us, um, where we are, and then next steps, and then Q&A. Um, it's going to be, I would say, broad strokes is my goal for this session um, to really go over our office holistically um, and see how we can best support you in your transition to Emory. So I think first and foremost, we are situated within the College of Emory College of Arts and Sciences, um, and we are part of the Pathway Center. And so um, the Pathway Center is, um, we're celebrating our third birthday um, this August, um, and this center brings together career and professional development, experiential learning, national scholarships and fellowships, pre-health advising and undergraduate research um, under one unit. Um, this unit then we're able to really help students succeed from entry to Emory um, through graduation. So um, we always are using each other for resources, for making sure that students are connected. And so a lot of the work that we do in pre-health advising actually overlaps really well with the rest of the Pathway Center team. Um, so within the College of Arts and Sciences, we are in the Pathway Center. Um, and then we are one office of the Pathway Center. Um, and so because we're situated in the College of Arts and Sciences, um, we want to make sure that we are sharing why liberal arts education um, is important. So I always say first and foremost, liberal arts education will help you with your critical thinking and your ability to discern information, to understand information. Um, and critical thinking, I would say, is one of the most important competencies for healthcare. Um, so no matter what field you want to go into, whether you want to be a physician, whether you want to be a nurse, whether you want to be a physician's assistant or a dentist, um, critical thinking is really needed for all of our work um, in healthcare. 
Something that we will really sh um, strive to make sure you know is that you can major in anything you want at Emory. Um, so being pre-health, there are prereqs based on the field you want to go into, but you're able to major in any discipline. And so that means that we will encourage you to um, follow your passions, follow your desires, follow the things that you're interested in. Um, you do not need to be a biology, chemistry, neuroscience major to be a pre-health student at Emory University. Um, now, we may need to have conversations about when to take prereqs, but that is different than your major. And so we want to make sure that, that um, you really know that. The other thing is we really want to make sure you also know that you can research in any discipline and it is applicable to graduate and professional schools. And so a lot of our students will come in assuming they have to do a wet lab research um, in biology or chemistry, um, but you can major in or you can do research in psychology, art history, English, um, and we've had students do um, research in all of those categories and still go on to graduate and professional schools in healthcare. Um, and then lastly, our chemistry sequence at Emory is just different than other schools um, in the nation, to be honest. Um, and we change the sequence because it is it, it allows us to be more into more interdisciplinary um, in our approach to chemistry. And so um, our chemistry faculty will lead our students through um, all pre health students have to at least take one semester of chemistry. Um, and so um, at least one semester, all of our pre-health students will be doing, but many of our fields want two, three, and four semesters um, of chemistry. So I would say we want to position here because, um, and I really want to make sure we know that liberal arts education is the foundation of everything we do in pre-health advising, but is also the building blocks for everything we do um, at Emory University. So here is our team. So um, within our team, there are eight staff members. You've met five of us um, here on this call. So I say that the five of us are the student facing members of the team. Um, we are your last name advisors. Um, and we are also um, the team that you would interact with most often. Um, however, we also have three other staff members. So Danny Loppert, um, she's our associate director for application advising. So she works specifically with juniors and seniors who are applying to graduate professional schools. Susan Pack is our assistant director for application advising. Um, so she, again, juniors and seniors. Um, and then Dr. Joshua Wallenstein, he is our physician advisor. So he works with us part-time, um, but he's an attending um, at Grady Memorial Hospital um, he, in the emergency department, as well as faculty with the School of Medicine. Um, and so he does host individual advising appointments, as well as group advising appointments for first, second, third, and fourth year students. Um, so we are a very robust team. Um, so we have eight staff members that are here to support um, you and um, your families through um, being pre-health at Emory University. So a lot of times we ask, and I think every school has different definitions of what pre-health means. So pre-health at Emory means that you're self-identifying as pre-health. So um, there will be a slide that we ask you to fill out um, to indicate that you're pre-health. And that is the number one way and only way you have to self-identify with us. Um, you're then able to meet with us as much as you want during the semesters and summers to discuss your class planning, your prereqs, your um, extracurriculars, things like that. Um, I always say advising is available for all pre-health students. Um, if you're meeting with us, as in the student-facing advisors, you will need an appointment, however. So um, we will host drop-in hours throughout the semester, but most of our appointments um, you do need to schedule. Um, and we advise, so all of us do last name advising, and we advise to all pre-health tracks. And so some schools will do, this advisor does pre-med and pre-dent, this advisor does pre-nursing and pre-PT, um, but we are trained in all of our pre-health um, areas. Um, so that way we're all able to have those conversations um, and advise students of all um, desires um, long-term. And then the other thing we like to really make sure that you know is that we do have about 30 peer mentors each year. Those students are juniors and seniors. Um, they do not, like you do not need an appointment to meet with them on a daily basis. So they have daily walk-in appointments. So if you have a burning question um, about what 
class to take or what faculty member um, would best meet your learning needs, um, you can always drop in and meet with them. Um, they also have appointments that you can schedule if you prefer a more formalized um, schedule. But um, being pre-health at Emory just means you indicate an interest in being pre-health. Um, so that means that you may want to be a physician, you may want to be a dentist, you may want to be a genetic counselor, you may want to go into public health. Um, all of those um, we can assist and advise to, um, and you just have to self-identify on a later slide. Um, so at this point, I just want to make sure I'm not watching the chat. And so advisors on the chat, is there any questions that have come up so far um, that would be good for the good of the order? Not yet. Okay. Perfect. Um, so we will go ahead and continue on. Um, so a question that we get a lot is what classes would you start with in your first semester? Um, I would say this is going to be a very individualized and personal decision. Um, this is going to be based on what prior science knowledge you have, what prior um what prior classes you've potentially taken or not taken. Um, and so we will be having drop-in hours um, every Friday, starting this Friday through August 2nd, um, if you have questions about science sequences and things like that. Um, I always say that I really, really, really want to highlight the second bullet point is it's learn to be flexible and plan appropriately. And so just because something is not occurring the exact way you want it, um, we need to learn that flexibility early on um, and we then can pivot and plan appropriately. In your first two years in Emory College, we really should be focusing on a mixture of prereqs, maybe for your pre-health um, career, but also your general education requirements. And so there are GERs that you need to finish by the end of your second year um, in order to progress on to your third year at Emory. Um, and so we do want to make sure that we're focusing on those GERs um, and exploring the majors and minors in those first two years. Um, and so you don't need to declare your major until the end of your second year. Um, and so really we want to emphasize the exploration of that. And so some classes that we recommend um, frequently um, are anthropology, philosophy, psychology, sociology, and religion courses. Um, they are 100 level intro courses that will meet most of the times, meet a GER, but also um, most healthcare fields want you to take some level of social sciences um, throughout your time um, in undergrad. And so that will get that out of the way early. Um, and then we do recommend starting with one or two science courses and appropriate labs. Um, and that is up to you how many you start with. And so you can start with one or you could start with two. Um, we do not recommend starting with any more um, than two science courses and their applicable labs. Um, and we'll get into that on the next slide. So for a majority of medical, dental, podiatry, um, and optometry, um, these are going to be your, I guess, standard prereqs you may need um, for the programs. Um, however, I always say it is most important that you as a future applicant confirm that you need these prereqs for your specific schools you're applying to and or the field you're wanting to go into. Um, and so, for example, um, and these all, these have to occur within your four years at Emory, so there's no pressure to get them done in like your first two years. Um, chemistry is our longest sequence. It is a four semester sequence of chemistry. Um, and so I would say that is a good one to start with just because you, it is four semesters. So that will take you through your second year. Um, biology, there's two. So 141 and 142 plus the labs. It's a two semester sequence. Um, physics is also a two semester sequence. And then it's a one semester of statistics, um, one semester of biochemistry, and then many will want um, social science humanities. And so um, on our website, we do also have um, prereq lists for the most common um, pre health tracks that our students are going into. And so we do recommend that you look at that, peruse, um, just so that way you're coming in with knowledge. Um, Again, these are common pre-health prereqs. These, this is not all encompassing, um, but this is kind of a snapshot of the most common pre-health prereqs. Um, so a lot of times we get questions of what if I have multiple interests? And so I always say that we, we, we encourage you to have multiple interests, both academically and outside the classroom. Um, 
we, I would say just make sure that you're meeting with your pre-health advisor um, and or peer mentors to make sure that you're planning um, your four years out appropriately to meet the timeline that you want to meet. Um, any major, again, you'll probably hear this three more times in the presentation, any major is appropriate for being a pre-health student. Um, and so we've had art history majors, we've had English majors, we've had film and media study majors, um, also fulfill pre-health prereqs, um, and then go on to graduate professional school in healthcare. And then um, the other thing, so there may be some nursing students um, or interested nursing students on this call. If you're interested in nursing, there are two options, um, but we would also encourage you to attend the nursing webinar that they're having. Um, I believe that either happened this morning at 11 a.m. or will be happening at 1 p.m. today. Um, so there is a single degree option and there's a dual degree option, um, both of which get you a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Um, the dual degree option also gets you a bachelor's degree from the Emory College of Arts and Sciences. And so um, multiple interests are supported and encouraged um, by our office. Um, so now I'm going to pause again. Kim, Nadia, Anthony, Sandra, are there questions that are good for the good of the order to answer? Um, we do have one about the um, research options, which I think might be coming up later in the presentation. Yeah. Yes, we will talk a little bit about research um, later on in the presentation. Um, I would say the other pieces, um, our undergraduate research programs office within the Pathway Center is also a great website to peruse to start um, that, but we'll get into research a little bit later. Okay. Um, so a lot of times we also get questions at this stage of when do I apply to my health professional program? Um, the answer is truly it depends on everybody is an individual and everybody has an individual path that they're going to be taking while at Emory. Um, everybody's timeline is different. Um, that does mean that some students will be applying to graduate and professional school at the end of their junior year. So going from undergrad at Emory to graduate school without taking any breaks or stops. Um, but a majority of our students, about 75% right now, of our students will apply after their senior year um, and then take one gap or one growth year um, just to give some time off between um, undergrad and graduate and professional school. Um, timeline for application does differ based on your um, track or the field that you want to go into. And so um, throughout your four years, make sure you're working with your PHA advisor to make sure you're understanding the timeline for application. So timeline for application is different if you're applying to medical school versus if you're applying to public health programs. And so that's just something that we like to say. There, there are some nuances between it. Um, and then I would say the big overarching thing we want you to take away from this is that we only want you to apply to the graduate and professional schools whenever you feel most confident and ready. Um, so only whenever you feel ready and confident. And so um, throughout your four years, there's gonna be a lot of programs and a lot of potentially mandatory um, things that we want our students to complete with us that will help them self-assess their readiness to apply to graduate and professional schools. Um, we want you to be competitive. We want you to only apply once because it is an expensive process to apply to graduate and professional school. Um, and we really want to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward um, in that application process. And so that is going to be a junior senior conversation with us. Um, but those are conversations that we love to have with our students to make sure that they feel ready and confident to apply. Um, so now that we've kind of forecasted ahead to your fourth year, um, you may say like, when or what, and like, when can I start accessing you? Um, so our peer mentor program, um, I would say the first time you can access us is this Friday um, for drop-in advising. Um, and we'll have drop-in advising every Friday through August 2nd. Um, but our peer mentors are also available as early as orientation. And so um, we will also have drop-in advising available during orientation week during what we call add drop swap. Um, so add drop swap is a period of time where you're able to change your schedule after registration that starts the Tuesday before classes and goes through September 11th. 
During that time, we don't mandate any appointments. You're able to drop in and talk to an advisor um, just so you can kind of have peace of mind whenever you're making any schedule changes. Um, and then starting in fall, you will be able to schedule with us individually. So myself, Kim, Nadia, and Anthony will be posting availability um, starting September 6th, um, and we'll have um, appointments available as early as beginning of September um, for students. Peer mentors will also have availability um, as early as September um, for their individual appointments as well. So you may be asking, who's my advisor? I would say this is a great um, time if you wanted to snap a picture of a slide. Um, I would say this is our dynamic team. Um, so Kim Molay advises last names A through C. I advise last names D through K. Um, Anthony advises last names L through R. And then Nadia advises last names S through Z. Um, and then Danny and Susan advise A through Z for application specific advising. And so think about that like interviews, um, interview prep um, once we get to that stage in the process. And so um, I, I will say that like we, we are a... Um, we are a large office, but we also do sometimes have wait periods. And so that is why we really will encourage students to meet with our peer mentors first because they are trained um, by our um, by our staff. And so um, we are always available to students, but if you need a quick answer, like you need an appointment the next day, peer mentor is gonna be the best um, appointment that you're looking for. Um, we typically have between a two and a three week wait um, for our advising appointments. Um, any questions before we get into some myths that we want you to avoid? We do have a few. Um, do we discuss the AP credit later? Yes. Okay, that's coming up. And then um, there is one about the Chem Plus program. Okay. So that one I know is not in the presentation specifically, but we might save that one for the end. Yeah, yeah, we'll save that one for the end. Okay. So um, AP credit is coming up. <laughs> AP credit is coming. So um, these are some myths that we want you to avoid um, as you transition um, to Emory. I would say student doctor network, Reddit, are sometimes not our best friends. Um, in the pre-health world, um, we want you to make sure you're getting good information. Um, that means we want you to talk with us. Um, we want you to talk with our peer mentors. We want you to talk with the PHA advisors. Um, and these are some myths that um, we really want you to avoid. Um, and so please talk to us whenever you're uncertain or if you're hearing other information um, through any um, webs or anything like that, let us know. Um, so one thing that we hear a lot is you must double up on sciences or you'll fall behind. Um, you never have to double up on a science. Um, it may make things a little easier in your junior and senior year if you do, or depending on your major, you might have to. But in order to be a pre-health student, you never have to double up on sciences. I would say falling behind, I would say like that really just tells me that we're comparing ourselves to one another. And it's really important that we don't compare one pre-health journey with another pre-health journey, um, even at the same school. Um, we hear a lot, you must take calculus for a pre-health program. Um, we really like to say no. Uh, this is gonna be based on your major or minor. So many of our majors and minors um, may require calculus, um, but nine times out of 10, most professional graduate schools are moving away from requiring calculus. Um, now it is up to candidates to make sure that they're checking their individual school prereq lists. And so, for example, if you're from Florida and you want to apply to medical school, I would encourage you to take calculus, um, but it doesn't have to be like this very moment, um, but you don't have to take calculus. So really do research before we're putting ourselves into that situation. Um, and then you have to take prereqs early so you can apply in your junior summer. So no, um, a lot of our students don't apply their junior summer um, and you don't need to finish prereqs. Prereqs are really, uh, we want you to build those out with your timeline of when you need to take any standardized tests, when you need to take them to be successful. Um, and so I don't want you to have in your mind that you need to follow this set timeline going in. And then the last two, I like to kind of talk together. So I won't get into med school with a bad grade in the science course. 
Um, and then I can compensate for low GPA with strong extracurriculars. Um, I always say I want to talk about these together because I think that they are important is A, academics are important for any graduate and professional school. Um, but one misstep or one poor grade on your transcript is not going to stop you from getting in um, to any graduate or professional school. Um, now we may need to, depending on how bad that grade was, we may need to retake something, um, but that's a conversation with your advisor. Um, so I would say like, you can't compensate for a low GPA with strong extracurriculars, but we do look at everything holistically. And so we want you to be strong all around. That includes academics, that includes extracurriculars, that includes clinical experiences. Um, we want you to be well-rounded um, going into graduate and professional schools. Um, and so I just always say, we want to talk with you before we go into a spiral with any of these myths that may occur. Um, there's many other myths we're not touching on, but these are like the five most common that we get. And so we like to go over them um, in this session. Um, and then here is where then um, other expectations um, that we have for you. And so um, I will go over, I think the one that is in this like blue highlight neon box um, is uphold the Emory Honor Code and conduct code. Um, I would say this is important because decisions you make starting your first year um, could potentially come back and you may need to report them um, on your application in your junior or senior or alumni status years. And so um, I always I always say like, that doesn't mean we don't want you to have fun, enjoy Atlanta. We want you to make appropriate, mature and responsible decisions um, to uphold the honor and conduct codes um, within the university. Um, and then you'll see the first bullet is our PHA blog. Um, typically, I'm just Googling Emory PHA blog. Um, that gives you opportunities. That gives you summer internships. Um, that's just something we want you to get in the habit of looking at. Um, there will be a new site for this soon. Stay tuned. Um, but right now, this is our blog. Um, second, we really want you to build a strong academic foundation. So you want to get to know your faculty and then ask for help whenever you need it. I would say you're here at Emory because you are wanting a, I would say, more intimate um, academic experience than I had during my undergrad. I went to a very large state institution. Um, and so therefore, the faculty members are a lot more attentive. Um, but they also, I would say, there's a bigger push for teaching um, at Emory versus where I went to undergrad. Um, and so I always say our faculty want to assist. They want you to be successful. And so please ask us if you feel nervous um, asking a faculty member for help, and we're happy to help you draft that email, or our peer mentors may be able to help you draft that email and connect you with a the faculty they may know. And then lastly, we would love if you could join our mailing list, um, and that is our QR code here. And so this will actually help you just already self-identify as being a pre-health student at Emory University. Um, and so, and this will also be available in emails and things like that over the summer. Um, so we're at a good place now and I need another sip of water. Other questions, Kim, Nadia, Anthony, that may need to be addressed. Hi, Greg. Um, I think this is coming up a little bit more. I was wondering if you could speak a little, and there's some questions about um, essentially the idea of doing nursing and switching from pre-med to pre-nursing, and conversely, if they wanted to do nursing first as a way to get to medical school. I wonder if you could speak a little bit more to that. Yeah, so that is a good question. Um, that is not typically something that we would advise to. I think a lot of what I always ask is, what are you interested in being in healthcare for? Um, and that answer is going to be different based on everybody, based on how you're reflecting, based on experiences we're getting. Um, but the education of nursing is different than the prereqs needed for medical school. Um, so therefore, like it will be a scheduling challenge. That's just logistically one thing. I think B, I also like to think about it like we are in a need, like we need nurses. We also need physicians in current U.S. healthcare. Um, if we are taking seats from nursing programs um, and your goal is to apply to medical school, um, there's probably a student that then is missing out on that seat um, that really wanted to be a nurse. Um, I also say 
nursing, if you go on and get doctoral level degrees, um, some of the responsibilities of our nurse practitioners um, are very similar to that of a physician. And so I would say like, I really want our students to do our research about the fields and make an informed decision. Um, I think for me, admissions teams, I think also take pause whenever a student went straight from nursing school to medical school. Um, now it's different if you go to nursing school and then you're working as a nurse for five, six, seven years, and you have a change of heart and want to go back and like do a career change moment. Um, but to go from nursing school straight to medical school, I would say is not the best, A, use of your time, B, use of your money, because you're gonna probably be paying for classes outside of your nursing curriculum. Um, and then I also think that it, it just is a little confusing for admissions teams why you're not deciding to go forward with nursing as a career. We do have also a question, Greg, um, about, well, a little bit more about ch choosing courses, kind of making those decisions. I, I'll just address it just instead yeah. of in the chat. Um, you have a team of advisors, which means you work with um, a wide range of people at Emory. Um, we are a part of that team because you're pursuing healthcare. And so, yes, you'll meet with your advisor in pre-health, um, but your official advisor of record is actually assigned to you through our general academic advising team. And we work very closely with them as well. And then as you progress through your four years, you're gonna also um, declare your major in the future and you'll have a faculty advisor in the academic department as well. So all across four years, you're basically gonna have those three because you're self-identifying as pre-health, you have an assigned academic advisor that you need to make sure you're meeting with so you can graduate and then you have your faculty advisor. Um, so it is a team approach at Emory. Thanks, Okay, so we're moving towards registration. That's the goal of, you know, the this session is um, over the month of July, you'll be going to your pre-registration advising appointments um, with your OUE advisor, um, your advisor of record that Kim just mentioned. Um, and so the things that we want you to do before registration are one, verify AP, IB, and transfer credits are posted to OPUS or have been received by admissions. Um, that's just important because it will make the registration process smoother. Um, and so do that now, just so that way you um, can just have one less stress um, come August during registration. Second, we really want you to decide where to start. And so this is gonna vary based on your background, your AP credits, IB credits, transfer credits, things like that. Um, so, we always recommend you may start with chemistry, biology, or both in year one. Um, I always say, if you're like questioning, if you're in doubt of like, I don't know if I should do one or two, if you're just picking one, I typically recommend chemistry because it is a longer sequence. Um, but again, if you're like, no, I don't want to take chemistry, we support you um, and we will support you in taking that later. Um, just please know for chemistry, there is going to be a Emory College Chemistry Prep. It's the ECCP, um, ECCP, yes, two Cs. Um, and that is gonna be completed by the chemistry department deadline. Um, it is pre-work to make sure that you're like getting kind of caught up um, or that everybody's approaching chemistry with like the same understanding um, thus far. Um, and then lastly, we really want you to visit our website. Um, so prehealth.emory.edu. Look at our explore page and look at the prereqs you need for any track that you're interested in or prehealth field that you're interested in. Um, now I'm getting nervous that my AP slide uh, is not here. So give me one second. And it's coming up still. Okay, so sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, okay, so resources and availability of services, I would say, is the next piece of just like when we are available. So um, this slide is also a great way to um, think about 
the areas that we want you to develop in over the next three to four years. And so um, this mirrors our holistic development model. Um, so first advising. So we want you to be in connection with our office. So with our peer mentors, our physician advisor, and your PHA advisor, there's going to be a lot of different ways you can interact with us throughout your first year. Um, research opportunities. So you can start those as early as your first semester. I typically recommend waiting until your second semester. Um, I in your first semester, though, you could start reaching out to potential labs that you may want to join um, for January um, of 2025. I would say I want I recommend waiting because I really want you to find a sense of belonging, adapt to the academic course load of college and also get involved in extracurriculars in that first semester. And I don't want you so stressed about research that that's what you're putting your time and energy into and we're falling behind with clubs and organizations or academics um, and things like that. And so um, research opportunities can be found, I'd say the most common is cold emailing, um, but through our undergraduate research programs office, um, there is also a software called Forager One um, that is able to help you identify research labs that may be of interest to you. Um, at Emory, I think we're really positioned um, beautifully in that you could have a lab within your major, so biochemistry, neuroscience, art history, anthropology, but you could also have labs within any of the hospital systems, so Winship Cancer Hospital, Emory University Hospital, then you could also have a lab within any of our graduate schools, so Emory School of Medicine, Rollins School of Public Health, our School of Nursing is sometimes looking for undergrads. Um, and so really be open-minded to different research opportunities. Um, it doesn't have to just be in your major. It could be associated with what you're interested in, but maybe at Winship Cancer Hospital versus um, within your major. Um, Pre-health clubs and organizations, I think last count, we have like 96 of them um, on our campus, which is amazing, but also overwhelming. Um, please do not join all 96. Um, I always say we want to share the wealth and share the love. Um, and so maybe pick one or two during orientation week, during the involvement fairs that you want to join, that you would like to get involved with. Um, now you can put your name down for as many as you want, um, but I would say one or two involvements your first semester is really great and that's where we want you. Um, I also want you to get involved in clubs and orgs outside of pre-health. So everything you do at Emory does not need to be pre-health. Um, you could also get involved in sorority fraternity life. You can get involved in residence life. You could get involved in, um, we have like an equestrian club, we have rec sports, get involved in things outside of pre-health because those will also help you develop as a leader on our campus. Um, academic tutoring. So we stressed earlier that academics and getting that strong academic foundation is really, really important. Um, we do have a robust academic tutoring, um, both peer tutoring and um, the use of like graduate student tutoring um, within our Office for Undergraduate Education, um, which is positioned within the College of Arts and Sciences as well. Um, I would say tutoring is not like a sexy word, um, but I really want you to be okay with asking for help um, whenever concepts aren't clicking. It's much easier to get help and support in August, September, October than it is in December right before finals whenever we're trying to cram an entire semester's worth of information um, into your brain um, before the final. And so I always say like, it doesn't hurt to go to a tutoring session once a week, even if you don't need help, just to ask questions and go over concepts that the faculty and the students have prepared for you. And then lastly, I would say we are also, you know, we are in a hub of healthcare in Atlanta. Um, and so we do have hospitals and clinics within walking distance um, to our residence halls that all of our first and second year students will be living in. Um, the hospitals and clinics that you want to get experience in don't have to be the on-campus hospitals though. They could be off-campus. Um, but I would say work with peer mentors, work with your advisors to find those opportunities. Um, it does take, in order to shadow or be involved in any of our hospitals, it typically takes um, between 
two to six weeks, depending on the time of year, um, in order to get you onboarded. Um, I would say we're more like the four weeks. Um, and we do really want you to have a, an, a GPA prior to um, getting any clinical in our hospitals on campus. Um, now you could volunteer um, in a clinic off campus um, with a club organization, but we do want to see that GPA. Um, so January would be the first time that you could start shadowing um, at any of the Emory University hospitals and clinics that you need to go through our process with. Um, I know there's a lot of information I just went over. You will continue to hear this information throughout your time at Emory, um, but you will also get more information once you get here. And so I think a lot of times students want all the information. Um, we just want to give you a tasting of the information so that you can do some research on your own. And then I'll go over some ways that you can get involved with our office starting week two at Emory, that then will give you more specifics related to each of these areas. Kim. Did you have something, Kim? Oh, um, we might want to open it up for questions as soon as you finish the slides, because okay. okay. we're getting a lot. Okay. Sounds it good. might be easier to answer them in the group instead yeah. of the chat. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and then... Do you want to do it now or do you want me to finish the last two slides? Um, just finish the where they can find us. Okay. Yeah, this one's um, good. Finish up so those. So this is another, so we just want to make sure you all know that um, August 28th through September 6th, no appointments are needed to access pre-health advisors. Um, walk in 10, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, in B. Jones building. So if you know where the Starbucks on campus is, you know where B. Jones is. So we're the building right behind Starbucks and the um, admissions building. So where all the tours start. And then um, starting September 7th, I guess technically, um, you will need an appointment to meet with an advisor. Um, and then September 9th through December 11th, our peer mentors have walk-in times um, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so um, those are our availabilities for that. Um, we will skip over this and come back to it. And then our office is here in B. Jones. And so that's what the front of our building looks like with the first suite to the right. Um, and our students, we have a study space in the back that our students will hang out in um, to answer any of your questions. Um, and then this is really one of our last slides. And so I'll, I'll answer the AP question afterwards live. Um, we took it out of here because I think it caused some stress in the past. Um, so these are the ways we want you to utilize us in our office in the first year. Um, so first, we want you to plan your semester. So you can start planning all four years now, um, but know that that plan can change. Um, but we want you to map out the prereqs um, in those ways. We want you to participate in the first year kickoff and first year mentor groups. So these will start week two um, and they will go through week 16 at Emory. So it's your entire first semester. Um, we do a first year kickoff and then you'll have a small group mentor um, that you can engage with. Um, and then we want you to visit peer mentors in the fall. And so um, the number one goal is for you to meet with a peer mentor in fall so that way you can go over your four year plan, go over how you're planning out your prereqs, um, and then um, that way you have that plan that then you can bring to an advisor in the spring. Um, we also want you to explore. And so A, look at the prereqs here, but then B, we want you to explore by getting involved outside the classroom. So that's clubs, organizations, clinical experiences. Um, but I would say if you're undecided in your pre-health track, um, the healthcare professions hop it's going to be fall of 2024, not 2023, um, and the date is to be determined. Um, so that will be announced. So in um, end of August, beginning of September, um, you'll have the full calendar of all of our programming for the semester. Um, and so we plan a semester at a time. And so um, we really want to make sure that you know that you can explore. You don't need to be set on your path now um, and that we're here to also help you like figure out what it means to go into healthcare um, long term. So here's our drop-in times for pre-reg. I'll leave those up on the screen as we answer some questions and I'll progress to the last slide. Um, so I'll start with some the AP question that Kim brought up. So at Emory, you can bring in up to 12 AP credits. Um, I guess one thing to note 
is if you're bringing in AP Bio, you still need to take 141 Lab. Um, so that is one, you do need to take that lab. So 141 Lab still needs to be taken, that's two credits. Um, so the AP Bio credit only gets you out of lecture. Um, AP courses are accepted by medical schools, but it is up to you as a candidate to decide um, if you wanted to use that AP score. Um, I always say maximize your AP scores you're using. Like you worked hard and in, in high school um, for those classes. And so we do really, like I say, if you have 12, use 12. Um, but if you are not feeling confident in your, um, let's say you're thinking about using AP chemistry versus not using AP chemistry, um, if you're not feeling confident about chemistry or you took AP chemistry in your sophomore year, let's say, of high school, um, it may be it may be helpful just to start back at 150, um, just so then that way you're not behind. Um, and that way, like you're 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 going to an appropriate level. Um, now, if you just took AP chem and you scored, let's say, a five, and you're like, I love chemistry, I want to do the Z track. We fully support that too. There's not a wrong decision, um, but we would want you to look at the graduate professional schools you may be applying to. Um, so yeah, Kim, anything? I would just add, yeah, I would just add that there's a little um, question on the math courses um, because we cover so many different healthcare areas. It's very hard for us to say yes or no on a specific math course. Um, but let's just talk about pre-med for a minute and, um, you know, we've looked really closely at the medical schools and work really closely with the admissions teams. They really want you to do the stats. So we recommend the QTM 100, which is a statistics course. If you're really focused on applying to medical school, um, that doesn't mean you don't need calculus. You might need it for your major, but you're not going to need it for the MCAT or for medical school purposes, but you need the stats for that. Um, if you're going to do a STEM major and you've taken the AP Calc, and you know you're going to be a STEM major, you're probably going to use that AP Calc credit. Um, that's about as specific as we can get for like a pre-med student, but then when you're interested in other healthcare programs, the math course could um, be based on either what you need to graduate from Emory for your major or which program you're applying to. Um, so unfortunately, it's one of those questions that isn't an easy black and white, but it's definitely one that we can sit and work with you um, when we meet. Um, and we can definitely give you, you know, our suggestions, but we recommend the QTM 100. And with the, I know there was a question that just got asked, would AP stats count for QTM 100? Um, that answer is no. So AP stats credit does not cover our QTM 100 at Emory. Um, also for decisions about your AP credit, as Greg said, and, and we've said in the chat as well, um, don't let those credits go to waste. Like, you know, utilize the credits up to the 12 hours that Emory allows you to apply towards your degree. Um, but it's also an individual decision on how long ago you took, you know, the test, when what year you were in high school, how comfortable you feel. Um, things like that come into, you know, there are those factors in making the decision. So during orientation, um, you'll also be able to talk to the chemistry department or the biology department about your AP score and sort of like what they would recommend based on knowing the Emory content. And so we also want you to take advantage of that opportunity to speak to the academic departments when you're making the decision. But for registration purposes, you can certainly register for the courses that you want um, and make adjustments during orientation. Okay, so I'm going to progress the slide. So here's our drop in times through August 2nd. Every Friday, there's different hours to hopefully meet all students' needs um, with time zones and other things. Um, and then I'm going to progress this slide just so that way any student that has not um, scanned in or signed in for me, if you can scan this QR code and just so we can track attendance, that'd be great. And we will continue um, answering questions. Um, 
one question that I got directly and I'll just address widely is are we, like, do we only support Atlanta students um, at PHA? So pre-health advising supports both Atlanta and Oxford students. Um, and so all students have access to us. Um, any Oxford students just need to um, let us know you need a virtual appointment so that you don't trek all the way to Atlanta to have an appointment, we can easily change that. And so, but we do support all Atlanta and Oxford. We will be at Oxford orientation in August, just like we'll be at Atlanta orientation in August. And Greg, if you don't mind me adding, we do come out to Oxford several times throughout the semester as well. Um, this question, um, kind of skimming through to make sure we've covered most of them from um, a student about medical schools prioritizing the classes you took, whether taking harder classes or getting better grades um, is a priority for medical schools. So medical schools are very um, focused on students who understand the competencies, which is why we talk about the Liberal Arts Foundation and having an interdisciplinary sort of holistic balance to your courses. So the answer is that, you know, you want to do your best in those lower level science classes. Yes, you need chemistry, physics, biology, um, and you need to do well in the courses to do well on the MCAT. Um, but as far as like your major and balancing it out with humanities and social science and other areas, that is something we want to work really closely with you to build that plan um, so that you can get the strongest cumulative GPA at the end based on your major and your prereqs you need for medical school. So, so that's kind of how we approach, um, you know, helping students with their schedule and making decisions about their classes. Um, I will say medical schools do care about your grades. So they want you to do well in chemistry, physics, and biology, because that's a foundation, not just for MCAT, but for, you know, advanced material that you'll, that you'll see when you're in medical school. Any other questions from the chat that we want to make sure we've covered? We only have about a minute uh, left. Any other urgent questions that haven't been addressed? Greg, can you do one more plug for our summer drop in advising? Yeah. So I will go back one more time. Well, maybe not. I'm. So here on the screen, you'll see um, the different drop-in times throughout the um, summer. So starting this Friday, July 12th, um, we'll have drop-in times. Um, I would say it is helpful to go to your pre-registration advising meeting prior to coming to this um, because your pre-registration advisor is also going to be I'd say we are well equipped to talk about AP scores, but they're going to be the best people to talk about like the best combination to meet GERs and meet this and meet um, the different credits. And so um, we we're having them on Friday because G PRAs are Monday through Thursday. Um, and so that way there's time. Um, you don't need to go to a PRA prior to coming to this, but um, they're every Friday um, for an hour at a time. And there'll be breakouts, like there'll be breakout rooms. And so an advisor and a group of peer mentors will be in each breakout room answering questions for people. And Greg, do you want to talk about the Chem Plus? Yeah, I can talk about Chem Plus. So Chem Plus is, um, so you, you're you only eligible for Chem Plus if you are invited um, to Chem Plus. It, it is one extra credit um, that allows you, I would say, my undergrad, they used to call it like a recitation, but it was like a um, like an, an, an extra hour of like time with the faculty member or graduate student um, to make sure that you're getting that good foundation um, in chemistry. Um, the hope is then to be a little more hands-on in that first semester of chemistry. So rather than five credits, it's six credits. 
it's a smaller class. So it's, uh, I believe it's like capped at 45, um, but that changes each year depending on um, the students invited. Um, and then that way you have that stronger foundation moving into Chem 202, um, where then they don't have a Chem 202 plus option. Um, and it is that it like, it just basically it is, I, I don't want to say it's slower. It's just like a little more intensive um, and gives you an extra hour of time with a faculty member each week. I say do it. That's what I say. Uh, and no student that has ever taken Chem Plus um, has been upset with their decision to take Chem Plus um, that I've advised. So we are at time. Um, we'll go ahead and stop recording um, now.